Welcome. My name is Shantae Howard. I am District 1's Club Growth Director for the 23-24 year. And today we are going to learn all about Canva. Canva is such a valuable tool that we can utilize for our clubs. One, to better our marketing efforts and to help bring those members to our clubs, but also to make some really valuable content. So today I'm going to be talking about some Canva basics. We're going to talk about the Toastmasters brand and how we can make valuable content that we can showcase to our members and to future members to be. So let's get started in learning all there is about Canva. <music> get started with Canva. First, you're going to need to create your Canva account. You're going to go to www.canva.com and you are going to create a login account. Now, there are different accounts that we can create with Canva. This is going to be the main screen that you see. It's going to have your Canva logo on the top left side. You're going to see a lot of different design options. You can design spotlight, business, education. There's going to be a section that talks about plans and pricing, and then there is a learn section. So if you have time to play around with it, I say touch everything. <laughs> you cannot break it, but definitely just go into the learn section, see all the great things that Canva has to offer. And of course, that can help you generate questions, comments, and anything else that you want to present to us. And we can definitely help you learn more about the program. But for now, we are going to choose either a free account or a paid account. If you scroll down, you're going to see Canva free. You can click here. I do suggest if you are a first time Canva user, you utilize the free until you get very comfortable with it. Next, you're going to see Canva Pro. Canva Pro, and look, it's 50% off, so we love a deal. But Canva Pro is going to give you a few extra options and tools that you can utilize that are not going to be available with the free. And then, of course, if you use it with a team, there is a Teams option that you could also utilize. So you're going to choose whichever one best fits you. Again, if you are new to Canva, I suggest starting with the free. It can't hurt while you play and get comfortable. And then once you get comfortable with the program, you can upgrade to the pro. If once you have signed up, I'm already signed in. So I'm going to create, use my login. You can sign in using Google. So if you are somebody whose main email account is a Gmail account, you can sign in using Google or you can sign in with a regular email. I have a Google account. I have a lot of Google accounts. So I'm going to sign in on my main account, which is going to bring me to the Canva screen. So this is going to be your Canva platform. On the top left, again, you're going to see that Canva logo. When you go from any screen, you will always see this Canva logo in the top left corner. You can always click on it to bring you back home if you are within a document and you get lost or you feel like you wanna start over, you can always click on the Canva logo to, to find home. On the left of the logo, you're going to see three lines. That is the main menu. If you click on the main menu, you're going to see your, it's going to open up so that you see your name here which is my name is Shante Howard. So you're going to see Shante Howard's team. It is going to say whatever name you put in when you logged in, it's going to say that name and then it's going to add team. Because if you were somebody who at some point you want to add people to your team, you can even with a free account, even with a paid account, even if you do not have a Teams account, you can create teams as needed. Underneath, you're going to see home. Again, that's going to bring you back to this main screen. If you do get go end up somewhere else, you're going to see Magic Studio. Magic Studio is full of tools and tricks and AI wonderfulness that we can use to help us generate more content. You're going to see projects. Projects is where all of the content that you create will live. You're going to see some templates that we can utilize. Brand, which we're going to talk about in a minute. And then you're going to see your apps. Apps are going to be additional tools that you can download, additional programs that you can download to utilize with Canva 
to help you create more engaging content. Next, you are going to see on the left, I'm sorry, on the right, you're gonna see what will you design today? Here is going to be a search tool that you can utilize as a shortcut. So if you are somebody that's like, hey, I wanna design a presentation, you can type in presentation and what that will do is it will bring up templates that you can utilize for presentations. It will also give you a couple of suggestions based off things that you've used before or based off what's popular in the search tool today. If you didn't have something that was as specific as a presentation, you can choose a few words to talk about exactly what it is that you want to create. So as you can see, it prompts you to use five plus words to describe your design. So you can say, create content for social media. And then what that's going to do now is it's going to pull up, again, some templates and tools that you can click on and play with to see if that fits what you are looking for. But we're going to skip all that today because I'm going to show you a slightly easier way to search, especially if you're somebody who is not as tech savvy, somebody who doesn't necessarily want to create tools from scratch. There are tons of templates that we can utilize. We have underneath, you'll see docs, which is always going to be first. Whiteboard is always going to be second. The reason why these are first and second is because these are tools that Canva wants you to utilize. These are some of their most popular and some of their newer tools. Doc is gonna help you write a document. It's that simple. There are some AI tools within there that you can utilize. And then you have Whiteboard, which works very similar to how the Whiteboard works on Zoom and also how a Whiteboard works in real life, how you'll have your dry erase markers and you can write on it and you can create content. Next, you are going to see a list of additional types of content that you can create. These will vary depending on your usage um, and depending on where what you've searched for in the past. So you might see presentation first, you might see Facebook post first, but flyer could also be first, resume could also be first. It really, these do vary depending on what you use. So the more you use a particular type of product, it is going to push that product to the front for you to make it a little bit easier for you to use. So you can scroll to the right and you can see there are more products. You have Instagram posts, you have Instagram stories, you have booklets, you have graphs. So really get specific on what that thing is that you are trying to create. If you are trying to create an Instagram story so that you can promote your next membership event, well, click on the Instagram story module and that is going to give you a design template that is going to fit the exact measurements that you need to post on Instagram for your story. If you scroll down, you are going to see your recent designs. And so they're going to be all the designs that you have created. The newest design you have created will be first and it will go in that order. You can create folders if you want to create folders to organize your designs or you can create, if you go to projects, I just popped on over there, sorry, on the left, if we click on our projects, we can see the different projects in the different folders that we have created. So I know that's a lot of information to give you right now. So let's go back home. I'm going to go back home by clicking on my Canvas sign on the left because I just wanted that shortcut to be able to do that. You could have also clicked on the button that had said home that would have also brought you to home. But for right now, what I would love to do is talk to you about branding because branding is extremely important, especially within Toastmasters. We wanna make sure that we are creating content that is within our Toastmaster brand. So before I show you how to create a flyer or content for social media, I want to show you where we can find and create our branded Toastmaster colors. All right, are you with me? Thumbs up if you're with me. All right, let's go. First thing we're going to do is we are going to go to toastmasters.org because we need to know exactly what our Toastmasters brand is. So if you go to your toastmasters.org website, 
you are going to click and you will find your homepage here. The great thing about Toastmasters is there are no secrets in Toastmasters. Anything you want to find, you can absolutely find here within our resources tab and or somewhere else within the website. There are great tools and there are great videos that we can watch that will help us as well to really understand the Toastmasters brand. But for today, what we're going to do is we are going to go and we are going to look at the Toastmasters brand manual. So if you click on resources on the Toastmasters.org site, you are going to get all the resources that we can utilize within Toastmasters. Again, there is a wealth of information here for you. If you scroll down, you can see your resource library, your video library, your podcast. And if you continue to scroll, we have our brand portal. So we're going to click on the brand portal. And this is where you are going to find everything that you need branded for Toastmasters. Now, some of you have, may already be familiar with this brand portal. If you are a VPPR, you may have come here to download some of the stationery. Or maybe you order some business cards for yourself or for your team. This is where you can find the templates. This is where we also can find the templates for how to set up our websites. And this is also where we will find branded images that we can utilize for Toastmasters, trademark requests, and of course, the actual brand manual. So if you see under brand portal, right underneath, you're going to see brand manual, branded images, and the trademark request. I do suggest clicking on the branded images and getting an idea of the images that Toastmasters has provided for you. You can utilize any of these images for free. You can download them to your computer and to your system. So why don't we just pick a couple now just so that we have them on our computer so that we are ready for when we're creating our Canva content. We already have some pictures that we can upload without having to go back and forth to Toastmasters in order to utilize that. So I'm just gonna click on random pictures. Let this lady looks nice. Let's click on her picture. We're going to save that. We are going to save her image to our photos. And then let's also get one that's a little bit more interactive. I like this gentleman. He's hosting a meeting. So let's click on him and we're going to add him to my photos as well. And then let's try one more. Let's get this beautiful woman here who looks like she is happy to be at a Toastmasters meeting. She's just left the meeting. She's excited. She's joined Toastmasters and she's ready to change her life. We're going to add this image to our photos as well. All right. So I have now up downloaded those images to our photos. And then we are going to now, let me just get back here just so you can see how I got there. We're gonna go back to resources. We're gonna scroll down. We're gonna go back to brand portal. And then now we were in branded images. We are gonna to go to the brand manual. So we're gonna click on that brand manual. In here, you're gonna get a message about the brand. You're gonna see how you can contact the brand team. I highly suggest utilizing this at times. Well, first, and foremost, you should always reach out to your PRM, your public relations manager, because the person who is your public relations manager in your district is responsible for helping with the brand. So you should reach out to that person first for any questions on the brand or any uh, approvals that you need for any documents that you have. However, the brand team is here as well to help. If you need some materials, if you have questions, you can feel free to email the team at brand at toastmasters.org. Now on the left is what we are going to be more concerned about with Canva. So we want to know about the brand things that we can utilize with Toastmasters. Here we have taglines on the left. You'll see under the welcome brand platform, taglines, core value, brand promise, the voice and tone. If you click on that, it explains what the voice and tone of Toastmasters is. Toastmasters is warm, clear, friendly, professional, succinct, respectful, 
universally understandable and internationally friendly. It talks about the visual guidelines that you can use, the logo, the color of the logo, the size of your logo. Here are logos that you can download to your systems so that you have the exact measurements of the logos so that you can utilize them properly. It talks about space. It talks about pixel sizes. It talks about everything that you need, watermarks, all of those tools that you need to find for your Toastmasters logo. So don't go to google.com and try to find a logo and just copy and paste it because it might not be the right Toastmasters size um, for what is required when we're using Toastmasters brands and creating content. But go to the brand manual. You can literally download the logos as needed. But what I am really looking for right now is to really understand our branded colors. So if you look under visual guidelines, you see here on the left, you see logo. Under that, you're going to see the color palette. Yes, our beautiful, wonderful Toastmaster colors that we love and need to utilize when we are creating content. So you have your true maroon, your loyal blue your cool gray. And of course, you can always use black. You can always use white. And if you want a great accent color, we have our happy yellow. There are also some gradient colors that we can utilize as well. But the most important thing that we want to note is that hex number. You see right under, like, for example, let's look at that true maroon. You see that hex number 772432. That is the number that we're going to use when we want to use our True Maroon. Same under Loyal Blue, 004165. These are the numbers that we want to make sure that we have so that we can create our brand. So now let's get back to Canva because that's what we're here for, right? Let's get back to Canva and let's create our branded colors in Canva so that we have them so that we can utilize them later on. Now, if you are on a free account, you can, I repeat, you can upload branded colors. You do not need to be connected to the district Canva to get the branded colors. You do not need to pay an upgrade to a paid account to utilize the branded colors. You can utilize the branded colors on Canva for free. The only caveat is you can only upload three branded colors on a free account. So if you are using a free account, then there are three colors you can upload. So my suggestion is you upload that true maroon, you upload that maybe the happy yellow, and maybe you do the blue so that you have those colors. And then when you're utilizing, obviously black is going to be black, white is going to be white. And if you want to use the gray, you can always type in the number later and I will show you how to do that. So let's go on our Canva screen. You're going to go down on the left. You are going to see your name in the corner. You're going to see home, magic studio, projects, templates, and underneath you are going to see brands. Now notice next to the brand, it has a gray crown. Everybody see that gray crown? Take a minute. I have my little finger around it. Do you see the gray crown? If your crown is gray, that means that that is a paid feature and you have paid for that feature. If your crown is yellow, that means it is a paid feature and you have not paid for that feature. So there may be a fee if you use it, or there may be a watermark or some type of um, indication that it is something that you're technically not approved to use in that moment. And I click on that and you will see your brand kit. This is where you can upload any kind of brand that you want. Now, obviously, we're going to focus on Toastmasters brand today, but if you have a paid account, you can upload several different brands to your brand kit, and you can utilize that when you are creating documents 
where you won't have to necessarily always upload the color because the colors are already embedded in your brand's kit. So we're gonna click on brand kit because we are gonna create a brand kit for our Toastmasters colors. Now remember, your brand kit is limited if you are on a free, but it is not completely not available for you. You are still able to utilize it. So let's click on brand kit and you're gonna see where you can upload logos. We can upload our colors, which we're going to utilize our fonts. There are Toastmaster approved fonts that we can use. We can upload those here. And then we can also, if you scroll down, you'll see brand voice. You can see some photos you can place here, graphics, icons, all of the things, quotes, everything. If you embed everything into your brand kit up front, when you are creating content later on, you already have your pictures, you already have your fonts, you already have your colors. It is a lot easier to create content for yourself. So let's let's upload our colors. We're gonna choose three of our colors because again, we're on a free. We're on a free account. We, we're not upgrading to a paid. So we're gonna utilize our three colors. Now, if you did upgrade to a paid account, please feel free to upload all of the Toastmasters colors. But for today's training, we're gonna upload three. So we are gonna click under where it says colors color palette, we're going to click on add new. And it's going to bring up a color because it wants to know what color we want to add. So if we go back to our Toastmasters page and we go to those colors, remember we had our hex number that we talked about earlier? Let's look up our true maroon. So the hex number is 772432. You see I highlighted there. I'm just gonna copy that. And then I'm gonna go to Canva. And then right where it's highlighted here, you'll see the highlighted 6BA258. We are gonna put in our other number. And that did not work as smoothly as I thought, but I think I got it now. There we go. <clears throat> so as you see, I typed in 772. 432, and look what happened. Our color changed to the true maroon. There you have it. So now if you just click anywhere outside of that, you will see now you have your true maroon color. It's here in our branded colors. So now let's go to the next one. Let's go to our loyal blue because we love a Toastmaster blue. We're going to copy that. We're going to go back to our Canva. We're going to put that 004165. We're going to click outside of the box. And now we have our Toastmaster Blue. So now let's go and let's download our, let's do our happy yellow. We're going to, we'll utilize the cool gray, but we're going to use happy yellow for right now, just so that we can make sure we have that perfect yellow. We're going to go back, we're going to add, and we're going to put in our happy yellow. So now, we have our three Toastmasters colors. Now I know you see it's asking me to add another one because I'm on a paid account. But if you are on a free account, it is only gonna give you the option to upload the three. So those are your three colors. But while we're at it, why don't we add our Toastmaster font? Because we do know there is a Toastmaster approved font that we can use. So let's go back to our portal. And let's find the Toastmaster approved font. You see under fonts, we have Gotham and that is still under visual guidelines. I'm still in the same space. You'll have Gotham, you have um, as an alternate Montserrat, and then you'll have a Marriott Pro. Now I tend to go with Montserrat because that is what is on easily utilized on Canva. You can download more fonts on Canva, but again, we're treating this as if it's a paid, uh, as if it's a free. So we want to utilize what is already here. So we're going to just choose Montserrat. If you click on choose font, you can already see Montserrat is the first one that pops up. And then we can name it. So let's just say Toastmasters main font. We'll call it that. Okay. Toastmasters main font. That is it. We're going to click the save button on the right. 
And now we have our font, we have our colors, we have created our Toastmaster brand. How are we doing so far? Thumbs up if you're doing well. All right, perfect. So now that we have our brand colors and our brand fonts, we are going to create a document. That's here. We're going to go back home and we're going to create a flyer. Now, I know this is going to kind of go against what I said earlier. I said, be very specific about what you want to create, right? I said, if you want to create an Instagram story, you're going to type an Instagram story. If you want to create, you know, a Facebook post, you can click on Facebook posts. But when we are creating content for social, one of the biggest things that I'm sure a lot of you have experienced is you'll create something and it's too big, it's outside the lines, you're trying to post it on Facebook and then you post it on LinkedIn and then you want to post it on Instagram and then you have to keep trying to resize it or part of it gets cut off or your words aren't always there. And that's kind of annoying, right? But what we can do is there is one thing we can utilize that works across all platforms. And so what I like to do when I'm creating flyers is utilize what is called Instagram post. So if you look under where it says you might wanna try, if you scroll over, you're gonna see Instagram post. Everybody see that right here? And if in parentheses, it says square. And the Instagram post is the perfect size that fits every platform. So you see it says 1080 by 1080 pixels. It will fit every platform that you wanna use perfectly. LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, doesn't matter. Email, doesn't matter, this will fit. So if you are creating something that you wanna utilize across multiple platforms, my suggestion is to utilize Instagram Square. Do not click on flyer because you're going to get a PDF paper flyer. It's going to be too big. If you want for socials, utilize Instagram Square. So you're going to click on Instagram Square. And it's going to give you a blank square, right? It's going to be like, hey, we are here. You are ready to create. But just for a second, playing devil's advocate, let's go back home. Let's say, you know what? You're not somebody who wants to create something from scratch. Maybe you just don't have time. Maybe you haven't really crafted your skills yet to be comfortable enough to create from scratch. Or maybe you just don't want to, right? Maybe you're just like, hey, I just don't have the brain power today to, to, to create something from scratch. So there are millions of templates that you can utilize. If we go into our, what will you design today? We can actually tell it what we want to design and get some template ideas. So let's say you're having a club meeting and you just want to invite people to your meeting. So you can say meeting and click template and then under that meeting and it will give you multiple templates that you can utilize for a meeting. Now you can go through these. Maybe you like this one on the far right in the red where it says town hall meeting. That looks very professional. That looks good. Maybe you like something different. You can literally just go through and pick something that you like and then we can adjust it later. Maybe you're looking and you see that these don't quite fit the aesthetic for Toastmasters because as we know, part of the brand is we cannot use illustrations in cartoons. So let's say we want to be a little bit more specific. We could say professional meeting. And now we have more business savvy flyers that we can choose. So let's choose something from one of our professional meeting templates, shall we? Let's say, let me see. I kind of like the one we were looking at earlier with the red. So let me go back and you can just simply use your back button and it'll pull you to the screen that you had previously. 
and we can scroll down and let's use that red template that we saw before. So I'm gonna click on this one that says town hall meeting. I'm gonna click on it. It's going to say, hey, first it's going to tell me that this is a pro. You see how that is over here on the right? It says pro. So it has a yellow crown. It's letting me know that if you do not have a pro account, this is going to be a paid feature. It gives me a description. It tells me who the creator was because there are a whole, there are tons of people that create and upload documents for Canva. So they do get credit for it. And then there's a button that we can utilize to customize it. And there is a star button and there is more actions. We can share this content. If we felt it was inappropriate, we could report it. And we can star it. Maybe we want to utilize it later. Maybe this is, you know what, we like this, but it's not what I need for today. So I'm just going to put a star on that so I can keep it. And I'm going to X out. So now let's go back home because what we're going to do is we're going to create our own flyer. Yes, we are. You can do it. I promise you, you can. You are going to create your own Canva flyer. So now we're going to go to Instagram Square. We're going to go back down. You might want to try. Scroll over a couple. You're going to see Instagram Square, and we're going to click on that. So let's create some content. All right. Now we have uploaded our branded colors. We even have downloaded to our desktop some pictures. We didn't upload the pictures to the brand. We could have, but we can upload them through this way as well. So here is our blank screen. First, you're going to see on the left, you're going to see some templates because even when you go into Instagram Square, you might decide later on, you know what, I do actually want to use a template. Well, if you scroll down, you're going to see tons of templates that you can choose. And even from this screen, you can even use the same filters, professional meeting, and it will pull up flyers for you that you can kind of just pop into your document as needed if you find one that you like. Next to that on the left, you're going to see at the top, it says design, which again is where you are. You're going to see elements. Elements is going to be Elements is my favorite piece of Canva because within Elements are all the little little uh, chat keys. I love that word that you can take and you can use to highlight your pictures and make them a little bit better. So under Elements, you're going to see pictures, shapes, graphics. You're going to see videos. If you want to upload videos, you're going to see some charts, tables. There are so many things within Elements that you can use there. Think of it as the elements that create your document. Next, you're going to have text. There are your text. If you click on text underneath, immediately you see your brand kit first because it knows that this most likely is going to be what you want to utilize. So we uploaded, uploaded the Toastmasters main font so you can utilize that. That is here. Underneath that, there are different other different types of text styles. And then if you want to have some fun and create some documents, there are a lot of different, um, most of these are pro features, but there are different logos and words that you can utilize. A lot of these, unfortunately, are not Toastmaster branded, but if you are creating additional documents for something else, feel free to utilize these. Next, you'll see brand. That is where our brand kit is. You'll also see, if you scroll down, you'll see the brand colors. You see our brand font, and you can also add from this screen. So if you wanted to add a branded photo, we could add one of our photos um, here as well. Uploads. Uploads is going to be anything that you have personally uploaded from your computer. So I've uploaded some documents you can see here, all fun Toastmaster stuff that I've utilized in different presentations. So anything that you've uploaded will fall here. Draw. If you are creative and you want to freestyle and draw, you can draw. You can, there's some markers and highlighters and erasers and different colors. You can actually freestyle draw if you want. Underneath that is going to be your projects. Maybe you've already created projects that you want to include within this project. You can do that. Your apps. 
there are so many apps. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with the apps. There are tons of apps that you can utilize, special charts, photos, audio that you could create. And then photos is underneath that. These photos are not photos that you upload, but these photos are stock photos that you can utilize. You, if you have a free account, there are thousands of pictures within here that you can use. But remember, if it has a gold crown on it, that means it is a paid feature or it is a document that you have to pay an additional price for. So in these photos, even if you have a paid account, sometimes there may be photos that you do need to pay a fee to utilize. But anything that is does not have a crown, you can use. They are approved. You're not going to get banned or anything like that, or there's no copyright infringement you need to, to worry about because you have been licensed to use it through Canva. So you are fine to utilize any pictures here as long as they fit with the Toastmaster brand, but you can use any pictures in there. And then Bulk Create, which is a amazing feature that I will show you on another video, not this one, but you can use for Bulk Create. So let's go back to our design and let's create a flyer. Let's say we're having an open house and we want to create an engaging flyer. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pick a picture that is Toastmaster branded. So I'm going to go just, you know what? I'm going to go and show you how to upload from your computer. So we're going to go on the left. We're going to click uploads, which is one, two, three, four, five modules down. And then we're going to click on the purple button that says upload files. We're going to click upload file. And this is going to bring you to your desktop. Now, depending on how your desktop is set up, this might look very different. I am on a Mac computer. So my Mac is very different. This is how I pull up my pictures but you might be able to pull up pictures differently if you're on a PC. So I'm gonna click on my photos. In the bottom, you'll see there are the three that we just uploaded. So I'm gonna click this one with our group that I had picked in the middle, and then I'm gonna click the button that says upload. Now what happens is that the picture is in my photos. As you see under images, it is the first one on the top left. I'm gonna click on it and I'm just gonna simply drag it and drop it in my picture. So now you have your photo in here and we can utilize this and we can play with it. We can move it around. We can make it bigger, smaller, stretch it out, create it against the whole document. However you feel creatively, it looks for you. So just for now, let's just make this kind of big. I'm just gonna, let me actually back up. With the picture, notice that it has a purple line around it, evenly around the box. If you click outside, the line is gone. You click in it, the line is there. That is Canva's way of saying that this is the item that you have selected. Now, on the top left, you're going to see these circles. The circles will stretch out your document evenly based on the size. It'll make it either smaller or bigger but it does not change the, the size, the shape of the, the document. You see how I'm just kind of making it bigger and smaller. Now there are two lines in the middle um, that are in the center and on the top and bottom. These will stretch out your document. So you see how if I go up, it actually highlights the gentleman in the picture more. If I go down, it actually highlights and makes it the whole room. Same with the bottom half. If I stretch it up, it pulls the gentleman, but it pulls him from the bottom. If I go up, it shrinks that. So just be mindful of which way you want to move your picture. For now, I'm just going to pull it evenly. So I'm pulling it at the circles and we're just going to make it a little bit bigger so that it sits right here. We're going to just put it at the bottom just for right now. Now the background is white. I don't want the background to be white. I want to play around with some other colors, right? Because we want to try to make it engaging. And I do need to add some words to this because we're having an open house. 
So if you look at the picture now, the entire document is colored in purple or surrounded in purple. So that tells you now that the entire document is selected or for the sake of this, that white space is selected. If you now go up to the top left, you're gonna see this color block and it has multiple colors here, but if you hover over it, it says background color. There's also a button next to it to animate. So if you want things to move around, you can click animate and then position, which will help you shape if you want things in front and back and all of that. So we're gonna click on the color block. And if you notice on the side, there's a lot of colors that just opens up for us. Now, the first you're gonna see is document colors. This tells you that these are the, this is the color in the actual document not your photo. So keep that in mind. The document is that white space and anything that's been embedded on it, but the picture is its own kind of insert into your document. So this first square area does not include the colors of your picture, but the colors of the document. Underneath, you're going to see your brand kit because it's right here up front and center for you. So you do not have to guess what your Toastmaster True, Mar um, True Maroon is or Loyal Blue because they're already here. And then underneath your photo colors. So these are the colors that are embedded within that picture that Canva says, hey, these colors flow really nicely with your picture if you wanted to make something that was more blended in. And then there are other colors underneath if you wanted to play around with some different colors and gradients. So let's say we wanted to click on a photo color that went with our photo aesthetic. We can click the first one, which is black. So it's kind of showing you this is going to go and flow clearly. If you go down the line, you're going to see some additional colors that you can add that it feels may blend well. But here's the thing. These are not Toastmaster branded colors. So you need to be mindful of that when you are choosing and making flyers. Yes, these, these pictures may go, these colors may go a little bit better, but they're not Toastmaster approved colors. So we want to try to steer away from that a little bit unless we're using like a basic black or basic white. So I'm thinking, let's see, let's play with some Toastmaster colors. Maybe the red, maybe not. Maybe the blue. I actually like the Toastmaster blue. And happy yellow is an accent, so we're not going to go there. We're going to choose this Toastmaster blue. I like the way that this flows with our picture. But maybe I'm deciding I don't necessarily want this picture in that place because I don't know if that flows. So I'm just going to move this up slightly right there. So now this is perfectly in the middle, and it now blends a little bit better. So now we have our picture. Let's add some words to this. We're going to go back over to our left-hand side to our toolbar. You're going to go down where it says text. And let's click on Toastmaster main font because we already know that this is Montserrat because we've uploaded our branded font. So we know that this is part of the Toastmasters approved um, font. We can utilize this font. And you see as when I clicked on it, it automatically put it in the center of our document. So if I take my arrow and I hover over it, I can drag the words up here and I can say my club's open house. Insert your club name here, but my club's open house, bam. Now it's here, it is a Toastmasters approved font. And you could add in, I clicked on Toastmasters main font again to get an additional um, module that we can use. You could put any additional information that you want, Monday at 6 p.m., Zoom information, all of that. Now, let's say this is too big, because it is. <laughs> we can't fit too much information with these words that big. We want to make the words a little bit smaller. We can do that in one of two ways. We can highlight the purple, you see, and so my club open house is selected. We can highlight the ends and we can shrink it. I'm just literally clicking on it and I'm pulling it down. If I want to make it 
bigger, I pull it to the right. If I want to make it smaller, I pull it to the left. And then I'm going to put click on that and move that to the top. And then I can add whatever else I want. I can either click in here and make another line. I just hit the enter button. And let's say um, Tuesday, December 15th, do not quote me. If that is not Tuesday's date, I'm making this up as we go along. Um, and then we can say at 5 p.m. PST. We can click on the stretch to make it longer. Remember I showed you that earlier, the, the line in the middle stretches it out. So we're stretching it to make it longer so it fits on one line. And we can we have that here. And then if we want, I'm going back down now to my Monday at six. I highlighted that. Let's click on that and let's just say Zoom info. And then I'm making up a Zoom ID. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Password. Hello. And then I'm going to click on my circles and I'm going to make that smaller so that it fits. And then I'm going to move that up. Another way that you can do that is you can highlight that area. You can come up to the top where you see now the font is also listed, Montserrat, because that was our branded font name. And you also see the font size. You can adjust it here as well. And you see it only adjusted that top line because that's the one I had clicked on and not the bottom line. Maybe you want that. Maybe you only want one of the words to be highlighted. If you want them both at the same font size, you need to highlight everything inside of that box and then adjust the numbers as such. Or you could type them in, whatever works easier for you, whatever you're most comfortable with. We can also change the font color. Next to that, you see the A, it's text color. You click on that and here we go again. Here are our colors. So let's try happy yellow. I like happy yellow. So let's put happy yellow here. I mean, accent yellow. Yeah, happy yellow, that's it. Let's put happy yellow there. And then I'm gonna make it bold because I want it to stand out. You also have italicized, underline all the things. And then we are gonna leave that here. So now I feel like my club open house should be the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over here. Actually, I'm going to click outside of it. Click back in it. And if you see when I did that, magic right popped up. You have this duplicate button. If you want to duplicate it, you have a delete button popped up. You have your three dots that you can click with more. And there are so many things that you could do. But what I'm going to do, and it's actually in here too, but I'm going to show you another way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click in the box. I'm going to come up to the top. You see where it says effects, animate, position, transparency. If you wanted to make it, you know, a little bit less transparent, you can do that as well. And next to that, you see like a paintbrush and it says copy style. We're going to click on the paintbrush. Now we're going to click over our My Club House because we want that to match exactly the other one. And we're going to click in there and voila, it is the same. So you don't have to go back and find the color and then hit bold and then change the size. It automatically, font, it automatically shifts that style that you created with one and puts it to the other without you having to do all of the manual work. So that was an easy fix for you. So here we go. My clubhouse, <clears throat> Zoom information. You're going to want to add additional information, emails, phone numbers, contact people, all of that. For the sake of time, I'm not going to add all that in, but we do want to add our logo. So I am going to go to upload because I already have a logo that I uploaded in the past. But you know what? Why don't we? do this why don't we upload the logo to our brand so let's go back to our toastmasters brand portal let's click on visual guides we're going to click on logo you choose the logo that you want i like the 
We like the globe. The globe is always a fan favorite. You can choose JPEG, PNG, or SVG. JPEG or PNG will work. I go for PNG because PNG tends to be better quality in some of the pictures. So I'm going to click on that. I It popped up on a different screen because I'm on, my, I'm on two screens with my Mac. So no worries if you don't see it. But now I'm going to go back to Canva. Now here on our, our um, toolbar, we're going to go to brands. We're going to scroll down to see logos and we're going to click on add your logo. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the logo that I just downloaded to my computer. So if you click on photos, you'll see here's the logo and then I'm going to upload it. And then I'm going to hit save. So now I'm just going to go out so we can see if you go to your brand's portal, you'll see in your brand kit, you see underneath logos, the Toastmaster logo is already there as well as the colors. So now all I have to do is click on logo and there's my logo. So your Toastmaster logo is always going to be on your Canva right there for you. Now we're going to grab our circles and we're going to pull them down because we want to make the logo a little bit smaller, but we don't want to use the side or the top because that's going to change the actual shape of the globe. And we do not want to change the shape of the globe. We want to keep it exactly how it is because it is perfectly branded. We're going to grab that, click, and we're going to move that up. We're going to make that a little bit smaller and we can put it at the top. Now it might clash a little bit with this picture of the globe. So you might wanna put it at the bottom. Of course, there are some marketing uh, tips that might tell you exactly where to place the globe. I've heard that if this you are marketing inside your club, inside Toastmasters, the organization, people who are familiar with the logo, you could put the logo at the top so that people see it first. If you are marketing to people outside of the organization, organization, you might want to put it at the bottom. For the sake of today and just learning Canva, I'm just going to put it at the top. But you obviously utilize the tips that you have and work on what makes the most sense for what you are creating. So I'm going to put the logo here. Of course, again, this is missing a lot of information. It's missing your action items, your call to actions, your emails and all of that. But for the purposes of today, I'm just showing you how to create a document. But you know what? We can put that in there. You know what I mean? Come to Toastmasters, learn, you know, the art of public speaking, whatever tips you want to put that in there. But voila, you have a flyer. You have content that you can post on social media. So now you want to download it and share it because that's what we want to do. So on the top right, you're going to see a couple of things. One, you're going to see Toastmasters main font because it was a blank template. Canva named it the first words you put into your template. And the first thing we clicked on was Toastmasters main font. So that's what it named our document. You can rename this whatever you want. You see the when I click on it, it's highlighted. You can highlight the words in it and we can say, I'm just going to call it test document, but you name it, whatever you want. Next to that, you're going to see your picture, whatever picture you have uploaded into your Canva account. If you do not have a picture uploaded, it's probably just going to have your initials here, but this lets you know that you are looking at the photo. If you are sharing this with somebody and they are actively in your fit, photo or in your document, you can actually, you'll see their face pop up as well, which will tell you that somebody else, excuse me, somebody else is in there as well. Next to that, you're going to see your insights. And then next to that, you're going to see share. You're going to click on share. And then you can do share a couple different ways. One, you can send this to somebody. You know, if you're trying to get a document approved or you want somebody to look at it, you can literally put their email in and share it. I could say, hey, I want to share this with um I want to share this with Rakia. Her name popped up. So she gets picked on today. 
I want to share this with Rakia. So I can type in Rakia's email and it will automatically put that in there and I can share it with Rakia. Now, if you notice next to her email, it says edit. Next to that, you'll see the little down arrow head. Click on that. Maybe you want her to be able to edit it and make changes. Maybe all you really want her to do is comment. You don't want her to make changes. You just want to see what she has to say about it. Or maybe you don't want the comments. You don't want the edits. You just want her to be able to see what you're doing. You have the option of giving her whatever access you want. Do you want her just to view it? Do you want her to comment? Do you want her to edit? And then you can also leave a comment. Please review. Thank you. And then that's it. You can leave up to a thousand words. Only click this if you want to add her to your team. I, you do not need to add somebody to your team for them to view your documents. You simply just need to put their email in. And it needs to be the email that is associated with their Canva account. So please keep that in mind, especially for those of us who have district accounts and may have Canva in our personal email accounts. So for me, for example, my district email is shantae.howard at district1toastmasters.org. But my Canva email is my personal email. So that is not that same email. That is it. So if you're sending something to shantae.howard at district1.toastmasters.org, I might not see it right away because I don't have a Canva account within that email. And then all you have to do is click send. Now, we're not going to send it to anybody today, but what we do want to do is we want to download it. So again, on the same share screen underneath, you're going to see different ways that we could share it. We could share it to Instagram. We can um, download it. We can share it to social, but we're going to download it because we want to be able to email it out to people so that we can invite them to our, to our club. So we're going to click download and it's going to suggest the file type. It's going to suggest PNG. And for this particular document, that is fine. A PNG works perfectly, but maybe you don't want a PNG. So let's click on file type and it's going to show you the other options. Maybe you want to send it as a bit JPEG, which tells you that it's best for sharing. Maybe you do want to be PDF. If you do, it's going to tell you, hey, this is the best for documents that you're going to email, P PDF standard. Or maybe you want to print it, a PDF print. Maybe you want the SVG, which is best for web design and animations. Maybe you want to create a video. Maybe you want to create a GIF. So there are different options that you can choose, but we are going to go with PNG because that is what's suggested, which means that is what's going to give us the best quality for this particular document. Then we're going to click download. And this is going to send it to wherever your downloads and your pictures are. So I now have a document that is on my desktop that I can now send and share to all of my friends. How is that, everybody? I hope you guys had a lot of fun with me today creating a document. I know there are so many great things that we can learn with Canva, and I have so many great tips and tricks that I can show you and utilize with our Canva basics. But for today, we are going to end the video here, but please feel free to reach out if you guys have any questions. If you want to see more videos, let me know. And I can definitely create those for you guys. But for now, <laughs> enjoy Canva, play around with it, get familiar with the platform, and just have fun creating. I hope you guys make some amazing, amazing content. See you soon.